Good morning. Let's see, my, my volume is a little loud. I'm gonna turn that down so I can hear myself. Good morning, everyone. Let's see, who do we have in chat this morning? We have Arianne, hello, Arianne. Karina, hello. Rita, good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Monica. Screen buffering? I don't think so. I don't have any notifications that it was buffering. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, so we are starting a fresh page today. Oh, was your Wi-Fi? Okay, perfect. Uh, we're going to be coloring in Ivy and Leaking Butterfly. Everybody voted for this book, as well as this was the page that won in the poll on Facebook. So if you are not part of our Facebook group uh, in chat here, wait, sign into chat. What does that mean? One second. To like re-sign into every this thing this morning it was weird uh exclamation point facebook there we are thanks rita yeah i was going for something kind of bold and green <laughs> uh so anyway but this was the page that won so this is the one that we are going to use and then okay i gotta check this one second why is it Weird, it's not let me do that. Hi, Anne, good morning. Okay, well, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it. If I need to type anything, I'll open up the YouTube. Anyway, I got my coffee this morning. I wanted to get everybody's opinion before we got started. Good morning, Charlotte. I was working on a little fall coloring page and I'm not sure if it's done yet or how I feel about it. So I wanted to get everyone's opinion about what they think. There we go. Let's see, let's lower this a little bit. There we go. Oh wait, that made it brighter. One second. There we go, that's a little bit better. So, oh, Annette says lurking today. Sounds good, Annette. Yeah, you like it, Monica? Okay, I wasn't sure. Here, we can zoom in a little bit. I just, I'm not sure if it's empty enough or if it needs more. Good morning, Lucy. I'm getting an opinion on a fall coloring page that I made, but I'm just not sure if it's done yet or if it needs more. What do you all think? Good morning, Rose. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm also at the point where it's like, okay, do I add more and then have it be too much or do I just leave it and let it be? Cause I mean, I have to imagine it with color too. But then my other question is if it can't stand on its own two feet as on black and white, how is color going to help it? You know, Rita loves it. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll leave it as is. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet, but, um, oh, thanks Lucy. Seems it's missing something. Oh, I was thinking, like either something here to finish off the bottom, maybe, or something else up here. I just feel like maybe there's a little bit of the extra negative space. You know what I mean? Hi, and dang, welcome. Anyway, just just was curious with something I was doing last night, and I was just like, well, couldn't quite figure out what else. Couldn't quite figure out what else it needed. There you go. There's Nightbot. Maybe on the tree on the side. See, I debated about a tree. Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, so let's move on then. A top half maybe needs a little more. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Hi, Robin. Okay, so we're gonna be doing Ivy and Inky Butterfly today. Uh, the page that I'm doing is from the UK version, which doesn't make a whole ton of difference, except the UK version is slightly smaller. Let me grab the US version here. The UK version is slightly smaller than the US version if I remember correctly so here is the u.s version you can tell the difference from the covers so we'll put this on the bottom here you can see so here's the u.s version and here is the uk version they're lined up exactly on the bottom and you can see it's just slightly slightly smaller than the u.s version Thanks, Charlotte. Yeah, it's going for, I was, I was thinking they remind you of like a mermaid color or something, but yeah, it's green. We went for green today. <laughs> it's 
So anyway, uh, so like I said, the picture's just slightly smaller, um, but that shouldn't really make any too big effect on what we're doing here. It's just the differences in the printing companies, Monica, kind of like um, uh, and any other book from Johanna's series that are sold different countries, their covers are just slightly different. It has to do with the publisher and the printer and everything. Johanna makes the final cut on what the cover is going to be, but like if, for instance, if you look at the uh, Enchanted Forest version from Spain, uh, it's it's got like a half-colored uh, kind of cover on it. And like this, this is a copy of Secret Garden. I think it's French? I think it is. Anyway, this is a hardback copy of Secret Garden that I got quite a while ago. I haven't really colored in it, um, mostly because I just kind of wanted hardback. Uh, but you can see here, they're matched up at the bottom. You can see here, here's the size difference. So it's bigger and it's like, it's technically hardback, but it's more like compressed cardboard, which I guess they all are. But I just feel like the edges are slightly unfinished. The thing that appealed for this one, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is French was that in this version, there is a giant fold out. Let's see if I can move the camera up here. Let's see, let's get that cord out of there. Let's see, we're gonna bring this camera up as high as possible here. Okay, I can only go so high with the camera, but you can see it's got a pretty, good size fold out so that's the it's essentially like a poster drawing so that's that one and then in the back there's another one. Oh, it looks like i took this one out at some point uh, there's another poster that's like this size so it's the the tree which would be kind of fun to color considering how detailed the tree is um, but anyway, so in every country, you're going to get slight differences. They're not all going to be the, uh, the same books. So, so like I said, it's a little bit bigger paper quality. I feel like this, this French version, the paper quality is a little bit thinner, but I liked it for, from a collector's stance to have something that's a little bit different. So it's a hard bag, but like I said, you can see here, it's just kind of essentially pressed cardboard. But anyway, so yeah, it just has to do with uh, the publisher and the printer in, in each country. All right, let's go ahead and lower this back down here. There we go. I know, right? So many leaves, so many leaves. And you see, that's the thing is that, yeah, uh, something, um, you know, bigger may appeal more. But the fact of the matter is you're covering more surface area. So it's actually going to take longer. Good morning. Okay. Coloring Book Nook, I think I've asked before, and I honestly am having a hard time remembering, but what do you go by, Coloring Book Nook? So I could just call you Nook, <laughs> but it's just, it feels silly. So so what what do you go by? Either way, good morning. <laughs> um, anyway, but you're covering more surface area, so it actually would take, Shalene, that's right, Shalene, okay. I need to start writing these down, write down everybody's names. But got our coffee this morning, got our coloring page. I'm actually kind of excited to start this. One of the reasons I was excited about doing this is because it's got its individual little sections here. So we can like tackle a couple of sections a day here. So, you know, it gives us good stopping points. So I think for today, I kind of want to start on this door maybe. What do you think? Or we could do the bees. Indonesia night here. Well, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think we're gonna start here. So, what do you, what do you, what do you all want to start uh, first? Do you want to do um, the door or the bees first? I'll let you pick. And we are going to be using the Arteza uh, seventy-two count uh, expert colored pencils. So we're gonna do that. I think I got the French one uh, off Amazon. I want to say it was a Christmas gift at some point. I got it years ago. I haven't colored much in it. Like I said, it was more, more than anything, it was from a collector standpoint. The door. Oh, we have one for bees, one for door. All right, we need a tiebreaker. We need a tiebreaker. 
here we go, Arteza and Prismacolor chart. Um, so I'm going to be referencing um, the Arteza and Prismacolor chart here also. So if you are using Prismacolors instead of Artezas, then um, uh, 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 we'll have the, the codes and numbers. And if you want this chart, this is available for download in our Facebook group as well. All right, Rita says the B, Charlotte says the door. Who's going to be our tiebreaker, huh? B? All right, that's it. Monica says B, so we're going to do B's first. B's, B's, B's. Okay, move our little sharpener over here. I may even get to both today. B? Okay, three for B's. Three B's. <laughs> All righty. <sighs> coffee, coffee, coffee. Let's see. There we go. Oh, awesome, Charlotte. I'm so glad. All right, let's get our pencils out here. Okay, so let's take a look at our chart here. Question is, should we do traditional bee colors or, or colors resembling bees? Or should we do something kind of fun and do like, you know, brightly, you know, blue and purple and those kind of bees. So closer to traditional or fun colors? Not the traditional isn't fun. I suppose I shouldn't do it, say it that way. But what do you think? Some traditional, some not traditional. What do you all think? Let's see. Let's look at the chart here. Traditional. Okay, we've got one for traditional. Fun, oh, and fun and colorful. That's two for traditional. All right. Because I'm thinking we can do like a variation, like, you know, yellow and blacks. Oh, fun. Oh, it's half and half. It's half and half. <laughs> we could do the bees half and half, I suppose. Do some traditional and some kind of uh, a little bit differently colored. All right, well, let's start with a traditional one and then maybe fun. It's fantasy. Ooh, we have three versus two. Okay, how about we do at least one that's kind of traditional and then the rest will be kind of fun colors. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with, let's see, ch -ch -ch -ch. both. Okay, yeah, see, there we go. Kelly votes for both. All right. So let's grab, all right, we're going to grab noir and I'll go over the colors here in just a bit. Mix. All right. Yeah, that sounds, I think that sounds like a good plan. All right. So we're going to grab that and we're going to grab charcoal and we're going to grab a111. Just order new Ergosus as it's 16 pounds for their six. Couldn't resist the bargain. 16 pounds, that's it? My pencils are so teeny. That's amazing. Because if I remember correctly, uh, US dollars versus uh, um, the exchange rate, US versus uh, UK, they're actually pretty similar. So that's going to end up being, what, around 17 US dollars? That's amazing. Were they like 50% off or something? Uh, let's see, 111, pretty sure it's Coyote. Oh no, that's 110. Yeah, 111 is Coyote. Hey ladies, I'm here. I got a sick child with me today, so hi to Matt. Oh, hi Matthew, I hope you feel better. Oh, well, welcome Chai. Let's see, all right, so there's Coyote and let's grab 64, which is this. And then we'll grab number Ergo Softs came yesterday. Oh, awesome. I love the Ergo Softs so much. Okay, we're, then we're gonna grab this one. Okay, so we'll start with the body and then let's grab 98, which is Sage. And 47. Yeah, they're normally 41 pound for them. Flash sale. I think I had them in my basket. I got an email. Yeah, I would jump on that too. I'd be stocking up, man. That's awesome. Yeah, 16 pounds. That's great. Okay, so here are our colors we're going to use. 
All right, so we have got black, which the Arteza is 112. Prismacolor equivalent is 935. We've got charcoal at number 120. Prismacolor equivalent is 1065. Then we've got, Tommy's a little gurgly this morning. Uh, sage, which is number 98. Prismacolor equivalent is going to be 1020. Then we've got Space Gray, number 47. Prismacolor equivalent is going to be 1061. Then we've got Coyote, which is number 111. Prismacolor equivalent is going to be 1091. Then we have number 64, which is up here. Prismacolor equivalent is going to be 1003. And lastly, we have Yellow Sapphire, which is number 28. And the Prismacolor equivalent is going to be 915. Okay. So there's that. Let's get these sharpened real quick. Well, it's middle of the week here. How's everybody's week going? It's been pretty busy for us, but I feel like it's been just constantly busy since the school year started. So I'm still still waiting for it to slow down a little bit. I don't know about everybody else. Get these nice and sharp. Ergo Softs for my first pencils, which I had the 36 set, but I've got lots of other pencils. That's fair. That's fair. The 36 set is pretty nice, though. Like, they've got extra purples, and uh, I like that they've got a little bit more variety. I know I always say, like, I like the fact that it's a small set, but I'm not going to lie. I like the Ergo Softs so much that if they came out with a larger set... I would most definitely get it. Okay, we're just gonna do this one and I think the rest are sharp enough. Of course, Ian. And do you need the Prismacolor equivalents or just the Arteza, uh, Arteza numbers? And don't worry too, I'm gonna post this um, on um, YouTube afterwards. But here, I'll go ahead and do this. And then that way, if you're watching on your phone, you can screenshot it too. So let's. There we go. Okay, so we've got A, we've got number 12, number 120, number 98, number 47, number 111, number 64, and number 28. Also known as Noir, Charcoal, Sage, Space Gray, Coyote, Yellow Ochre, and Yellow Sapphire. I'll pause for just a second. Oh, the RTs, okay, perfect. All right, do you get those, Anne? But there's a little list. Like I said, you can screenshot them if that makes it, if it makes it easier. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in with our little busy bees. Okay. And we're gonna work on this one here. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer here. Or the closer the better, right? There we go, nice and close. Oh, I just realized I still had some lace on here from the Victorian colorathon. I thought I removed all of them. Oh well, it's gone now. <laughs> oh yeah, I love these ones, Try. Like Arteza sent them to me, but after I tried them, I was like, oh dang, man. I find that they're a good uh, pencil kind of in between Prismacolors and Polychromos. And they're not overly expensive, so that makes them much more accessible. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to use Noir first. Okay, let's see. Go a little bit darker on the outside, and then we're going to go lighter as we go in. Okay, 
Then we're going to go ahead and grab charcoal, which is number 120. We're going to go over that noir just a little bit. All the way till we get to the middle. We're going to leave a little bit of space in the middle for just a little bit of gray. So we can create just a tiny bit of a highlight. Oh yeah, most definitely. Well, and you know, reviews, reviews are one thing, but then to see them, uh, like you said, in action, it, it gives you a much better idea of how they actually work, how they blend, that kind of thing. Reviews are good for like a quick kind of overview if you're like on the fence as to whether or not to get them. Okay, now we're gonna use Space Gray. Fill in that space just a little bit. All right, now let's go back over just a little bit to fill in some of that space. It's funny because you're in so close, you can see like the tooth of the paper kind of where it's coming through. Also see how dry my cuticles are. I should probably take care of that this time. <laughs> okay, we're just using that Noir here to kind of fill in some of that tooth a little bit. Okay, then charcoal. There we go, and then space gray again. I love the Arteza pencils too. I might get some of these soon. I need more pencil wraps. There you go. Well, if you want, I have the description. Uh, I have the um, <laughs> the link in the description below as well as, let's see, I think it's just exclamation point Arteza pencil, I think is what I have it under. Arteza pencil. There we go. Okay, all right, now we're gonna go ahead and use our Coyote, which is A111. You can make the Ergosoft dance. Aw, thanks, Rita. Well, I've had a lot of practice with the Ergosofts. I do love them, though. I do. They're especially, like, because they're a smaller set, they're, they're my go-to pencil. Like, if I'm going to travel or, like, take pencils to a coffee shop or something, the Ergosofts are the one I take. But also, because there's a smaller set of them, I have, well, you can see in this camera up here, I've got this little wrap that I keep them in. And so I can just snag this and off we go. And this was made by a, a woman, her Etsy is a, a hum for hope. She makes really good pencil wraps. Um, okay, so now we're gonna use yellow ochre. It's okra, ochre, okra is the, okra is the vegetable. It gets ochre. I, don't know, I always feel like it's a weird word to say. Okay, so A64. Well, and I feel like having a smaller set of pencils isn't nearly as overwhelming, you know? Sometimes it just makes it easier to choose when you don't have to choose from as many of them, you know? Hi, Tyler. See, he's never late. He arrives precisely when he means to. And then we're going to use yellow sapphire. There we go. Kind of 
kind of hi Bev welcome we can zoom out a little bit you can see our little our little bee there all right so let's grab the noir again Okay, then we're gonna grab charcoal. I think the Artezas are my only set that's, that have the pencil name as Noir instead of, has been dipped in gold so pretty. Aw, oh, thanks, Lucy. I, I think it's the only set I have that like, doesn't call black black, calls it Noir. I feel like it's so fancy. Like I'm coloring with a fancy black. <laughs> like film noir, you know? <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go ahead and grab our coyote, which is number 111. Hi, Yvonne! On my break of work, so watching on me, and I'll be coloring those little bees in about four hours. Sounds awesome, Yvonne! Thumbs up for Yvonne. There we go. Thumbs up. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Yvonne! Okay, A111, so this is Coyote. All right, now I want to grab Sage. It's a quick hello, I'm afraid. <laughs> that sounds good, Yvonne. Here we go, we're gonna use Sage. Cool, and kind of light on that edge. If you press too hard, then you're gonna have harsh lines and it gets harder to blend those in. see I want to add another color on the edge of those wings so let's grab what is that 75 we're gonna grab number 75 ivory okay and the tip of these wings I want to add that in and kind of go over the whole wing here okay Little, little wings there. Uh, I want to grab, let's see, let's grab, let's grab charcoal. Okay, so charcoal. Add just a little bit of that darkness here. There we go, just a little bit of charcoal there. Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, and then let's grab Noir here. Okay, I'm gonna charcoal again. Sounds good, Yvonne. I was thinking that too, Chai. I was thinking the blues also, but I think I might've gone that way if it had indicated that the wings were see-through but she doesn't have any lines behind them. So I figure I was like, all right, well, well, we'll roll with a different color this time, kind of the pale greenish color. All right, now we're gonna grab Space Gray. Not nearly as creamy as the Prisma colors, but they still do blend. <sighs> All right, there we go. Let's zoom on out. 
All right, so there is our first little bee. <laughs> no worries, Chai. Now I wanna smooth out these charcoal lines that I put in just a little bit. So we're gonna grab ivory one more time. And we're gonna go right along that charcoal side here. We're just smoothing out that line just a bit. Hi, Kimmy, good morning. Here we go. Our little, our little bee friend. All right, so we have bee number one. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so for bee number two, let's do, I'm in the mood for kind of a reddish bee, like a brownish red. No worries, Kimmy. See, exclamation point, late. Okay, so let's grab, there you go. See, you're never late. You arrive precisely when you mean to. I'm gonna put some Winka Stilla on them when I do. Yes, most definitely. I wait till the end though, because I inevitably smear it. <laughs> I don't trust myself, to be honest. All right, so we're gonna grab 118. Okay, 118, which is dark chocolate. And then we're gonna grab number 72, which is garnet. Okay, and then after 72, we're gonna grab number 73, which is blood orange. Okay. So let's see, 73. And then let's get number 27. Yeah, that's 113. We want 27. Okay, 27, which is cinnamon. And then, so we go cinnamon. And then number 46. I'll go over all these numbers again. Number 46, which is coral. Number 46. And then we're going to use... Uh, number 75 again, which is ivory. And then for the wings, we're going to do, for the wing, wing, wings, for the wings, we'll probably use a combination of these colors. So I think these will be it for the colors for this bee here. Okay, so we have Number 118, dark chocolate. Number 72, garnet. Number 73, blood orange. Number 27, cinnamon. Number 46, coral. And number 75, ivory. Okay, we'll go over the Prismacolor equivalents. Oh, sorry, Tamara. But you're here now, and we've only gotten one B done so far, so you haven't missed much. Okay, so number 118, dark chocolate. Prismacolor equivalent is number 947. Then we have number 73, blood orange. Prismacolor equivalent is 922. Then you have number 72. Sounds good, Tamara. Number 72, which is garnet. Prismacolor equivalent is 937. Then we have number 27, which is cinnamon. Prismacolor equivalent is 944. Then we have coral, which is number 46. 46. Prismacolor equivalent is 1001. And lastly, we have ivory, number 75. Prismacolor equivalent is number 140. Hi, Dory, welcome. And I think they're all pretty sharp. Let's sharpen dark chocolate real quick. Guess it kind of shakes the whole desk when I do this. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we got dark chocolate. Let's zoom on back in. You guys are like so close to the picture right now. Like, I think I've measured it before. And I think camera to paper, 
see, you're like seven and a half inches from the paper right now. So y'all are super, super close. I'd probably get it even closer, but then I might not have room for my pencil. <laughs> right? Super zoom, exactly. I could lower it even more if we wanted to. Let's just see how close we can get before the camera doesn't let me focus anymore. We're gonna lower the legs just a smidge, okay. Yep, internet is doing good, Tyler. Let's see. We're gonna focus this. Ha! Huh? Still in focus. I mean, you can see how big, I mean, the bee is like the size of my finger, so we are super, super close. We are now officially, let's see, how many inches did that lower? Yep, you are six inches from the coloring page right now. <laughs> I know, right? And it's so tiny. I mean, look at the size of my fingers compared to the bee. Like, he's, he's like the size of my fingernail. And so we're super close right now. Practically a macro lens, right? I mean, literally, you can't even see what you can see in the little camera. This is how far you are from the page. So it's super close. Oh, awesome, Tamara. I know, right, Kimmy? Super, super zoom. All right, so we're gonna use dark chocolate first. Well, I figure with these tiny bees, we should be pretty close. Okay, so we're gonna do, it's funny though, cause like I'm looking on my screen and I'm seeing, oh, that's a nice big space to color over here. And then I actually like look down with, with the naked eye and I'm like, oh man, that's so much smaller. I feel like I should color by looking at the computer. <laughs> okay, so there's the dark chocolate. It's amazing though how much detail and different colors you can add on such a tiny little bee. <laughs> Alright, so that's dark chocolate. Okay, then we're gonna use garnet. This one here. Look how close that you can see the word, so nice. <laughs> All right, and garnet, which is gonna go here. A bit lighter in the middle. I know, right? I was kind of missing her. Like, I knew, I know we were doing like the drawing tutorials and stuff, but it's not the same as doing, you know, her actual pages. Cannot wait to get her book. We are gonna have so much fun with that. With Super Zoom, your nails look great. No smudges. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, if I do them the day before, like even if I have stuff like on the edge and stuff, uh, you know, once I wash my hands or use a nail brush, it comes off my actual fingers pretty well. So even if I mess up, it comes off. So yeah. Good morning, Kimberly. But thank you. Yeah, I painted these last night. This one's a little rough though, because like I put my hand underneath my leg when I was sitting on my chair and I got these little indentations and I didn't realize that the nail wasn't completely cured yet. I pulled it up and I had like all these little chair indents on my nail. I was like, oh no. <laughs> All right, blood orange. I like to try and paint them at night too, because you know, during the daytime, if you paint them during the daytime, I'm constantly worried, you know, I'm gonna smudge them or mess them up or whatever. And at least at nighttime, I can like go to bed and they cure overnight and I don't have to worry about me accidentally messing them up. <laughs> All right, there's blood orange here and here. Okay, now let's go over that one more time. So we're gonna grab dark chocolate again. Remove some of that tooth when we go back over it again. Hi, Rosemary, welcome. Yeah, we're up super, super close for this tiny little bee. <laughs> okay, there's that. And 
and then garnet. One more time. And for everybody coming in, we are doing a page from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Where uh, you can see in the, up in the little camera the page that we're working on. We are coloring some bees using the Arteza color pencils. But I'm also listing off the Prismacolor equivalents in case you do not have Artezas and you are using Prismacolors instead. Not that Prismacolors are the only other ones that you can use. Good morning, Shannon! All right, now we're gonna use Blood Orange. Okay, that's nice and bright, isn't it? Here, let's zoom out so you can see a little bit. A little, little red bee. Okay, now we're gonna grab cinnamon, which is A027. cinnamon inside here as well. Okay. Then we have coral. That's a little bit harder when I go back over cinnamon just to kind of work out some of that tooth. Maybe we won't need to add an extra layer here. And then ivory. Kind of go over all of that there. Let's zoom on out, see how he looks. Oh, that's pretty good. Make sure we're nice and in focus here. There we are. All right, so we're gonna use our darker colors here. Let's, there we go. All right, so we're gonna grab dark chocolate again. Okay, and at the top here, we're gonna start there. Okay, then garnet. And blood orange. Pop it away from that kind of lighter color that almost looks like he's wearing a mask now. I <laughs> just realized that. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead. Now that we've got his body, let's go ahead and we're going to use some of this lighter color. So we're going to use some cinnamon here. I'm actually going to make this about halfway, halfway down here, but fading out at the end so you don't have any harsh lines. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually grab dark chocolate again. Coloring in Maria Trolls Nightfall while watching you, so I'm lurking and enjoying, enjoying what you're coloring. Oh, awesome, Tamara. Hello, Senka, welcome. All right, so we're using dark chocolate here. Not pushing super hard, because I do still kind of want to keep this a little bit light, but I wanted to use the same color still. So the wings should kind of have almost a delicate feel to it. There we go. Okay, now I wanna go ahead and grab, let's grab number 34, which is apricot. And the Prismacolor equivalent of 34 is gonna be 939. Yes, no, subscri no subscriber glitch today, for sure. Well, after Kimmy resubbed, it kind of like woke it up a little bit, and that fixed the subscriber count the other night. If anybody who wasn't here is curious, uh, we logged on uh, on Monday evening, and my subscriber count said zero. I about had a heart attack. <laughs> okay, so here's Apricot. So 
we're just using the two colors on these wings here. So we'll be apricot there. And then we're going to grab ivory, which was the number 75. And that's what we're going to use here. I don't always have it planned out when I, when I color these. I tend to make it up as I go along. Like I have a general idea of the colors that I want it to be, but I do tend to make it up as I go along. So up close, obviously you can see the tooth that's in the paper, but when you zoom out, it's not too bad. Let's focus it again. There we go. All right, there's our little, our little red bee. How are we feeling about him? Pretty good? All right, so let's do, let's do this bee over here now. Thanks, Charlotte. Yeah, we were kind of doing traditional and fun. This little guy is gonna be purple. We're gonna do some purple colors. Oh, look, you can see the glitter on the nail polish. It's so glittery. <laughs> All right, so let's start with number 118. Do I already have 118 out? Yeah, that was dark chocolate. All right, so we're gonna start with dark chocolate again. Okay, let's move our other colors over here. Okay, so 118. And then we're gonna grab number 88. So am I covering those? I am. Okay. So number 88. And don't worry, I'll go over the colors again. Okay, so number 88. Zoom out a little bit here so we can see our pencil choices here. It's so funny how it gets dark when I focus it. <laughs> okay, so 118, number 88. Aw, thanks, Tamara. All right, uh, so 88, we're going to get number 109, which is lavender. Okay, and then we're going to grab number 87, which is purple iris. We're gonna grab number 62. Well, let's see, that's 86. We want 62, is this 62? Yeah, that's 62 lilac. And then we're gonna grab number 82. Let's see, that's 26. 82 is flamingo. Do you want 82? Yeah, 82. Okay. Ooh, it looks so bright in the camera. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, that's gonna be our color choices for now for the body. We'll move on to the wings when we get a little bit closer. All right, so number dark chocolate is number 118. Prismacolor equivalent is number 947. Then we have amethyst, which is number 88. Prismacolor equivalent is 932. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Zenka. Uh, and then we have lavender, which is number 109. Prismacolor equivalent is 956. Then we have purple iris, which is number 87. Prismacolor equivalent is 1009. Then we have lilac, which is number 62. Prismacolor equivalent is going to be 934. And lastly, we have number 82. 82, where are you? 82 is down here. There we go. Number 82, Prismacolor equivalent is 993. We definitely need to sharpen at least a couple of these here. So now that Johanna did her book flip through and she's had a couple tutorials, is everybody pretty excited about getting her book? Because even for those that don't want to draw, there's still some stuff to color inside the book, which is very awesome. I know I'm just going to be drawn like crazy. Thanks, Kimmy. Right, Kimberly? So am I. I cannot wait to get it. We're definitely gonna have to do some draw alongs when the book comes in.
almost done. Just want to make sure these are all nice and sharp because the bee is so tiny. And I just glanced at it. I wasn't on Instagram much this morning, but I just glanced at I see that Hannah's coming out with a new book in 2020. Hannah Carlson. Did I miss did I miss miss see that? I'm not sure. Let's talk about your nail color. It's amazing. I want some pencil pencils like that. Yeah, the nail color is oh, bump the microphone. So this is I use grab some of these here I found this really cool brand on Amazon and you can get these from their website too it's a really cool brand of nail polish that I've really been enjoying it's called fairy celebration she's coming out with a fairy book I didn't have a chance to glance and see what it is but Hannah's doing a fairy book oh my goodness I am gonna be all over that <laughs> Okay, so this is the one I'm wearing today. It's called ILNP is the brand. I got it on Amazon. Let's see if it'll focus on the nail polish. It's doing okay. Uh, so ILNP is the brand. And what I usually do when I'm doing my nails, after I clean them, and I, uh, so I use, Oh, Clara Markova. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe that's what I saw. So it's just a quick thing on Instagram. So I use like a mineral fusion just because the other stuff was just like the regular, you know, standard non-acetone thing was just shredding my nails. So anyway, I use that and then I put a little bit of solar oil on them because it's usually what they do with the, you know, it's like a mineral oil kind of, or there's, it's like vitamin E. Anyway, it's what they usually do at the salon. So I started doing that and it's improved my nail health a little bit. Then I add my base coat and then the color, which was this one. So it's nice and nice and sparkly. And then I use this top coat. So it's the OPI brand for the base coat and the top coat. But, right, Kimmy, exactly. But they've got loads of fun colors. So I like this one. This is like a, a blue holographic color. And then this one's kind of holographic too. It's like a green copper kind of different, uh, you know, it's got a few different shades in it. This is a nice kind of glitter top coat if I want to just add some special glitter to the top. Uh, this one is like an orange glittery one. This one I thought was going to be a little bit more galaxy style, but it's mostly just purple. So it's nice and pretty. And then this is kind of a mauve, I guess. I mean, they have actual, this one's called Sweet Pea on it. Um, but the green that I'm wearing today, the actual name of it is just called Fun House. <laughs> but yeah, so I discovered these nail colors and I've just been slowly uh, accumulating, you know, buying one here or there or something. But uh, yeah, I really enjoy these colors. They're just so bright and sparkly and they just pop. <laughs> I'll need that. When is it coming out? Oh, for the fairy celebration. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but let's see. Where's my, where's my phone real quick? I want to see. I could have swore that the one that I saw was Hannah because I don't follow Clara Markova. Let me just double check Hannah's Instagram. Hannah Carlson. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It was her. Maybe I saw a story on it, but she does say. Here you go. She says, working away on my new book. Here, let's focus on Yeah, she says, working away on my new book that will be released in Sweden in spring 2020. And I'm thinking about revealing the name and theme next week. Would you be interested in that? Of course we would be interested in that, right? Oh, yeah, Kimmy, there you go. You, you like that one already. <laughs> um, but yeah. She posted that yesterday. So, yeah, that'd be exciting, right? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Three of the Hannah Carlson books, Kimmy? I have all but jewelry box, and truth be told, part of it is I don't truly enjoy coloring a whole lot of gold or jewels or anything like metally, really. I, I definitely find it a little bit of a challenge. Um, so... 
Oh, it comes out on Amazon US in a few months. Oh, cool. So, um, I find that I don't really want to get a book that's like just all jewels. You know what I mean? Because I've seen jewelry box has a lot of jewelry. I'm sure there are some faces in it. Uh, we are using dark chocolate first. Can you imagine though if she did a fairy one? I would be all over a Hannah Carlson fairy book. I mean, Johanna's admitted that drawing people aren't her strong point. Oh, you have all the Hannah Carls. Oh, you're talking about the Clara Markova ones. I really should get a Clara Markova. I haven't. I should try it out. Okay, uh, now we're going to do these little ones. But I figure with Hannah's ability to draw people, that would be amazing. Okay, so that was Dark Chocolate. And then we're going to do Amethyst, which is number 88. I'll go over that dark chocolate a little bit. I believe it's already almost 10 o'clock. Then we're going to use lavender. I'm going to kind of go over this whole thing here. Okay. So there are those colors. Now we're going to go ahead and use purple iris I'm not sure if I want the fairy celebrations look because the pictures are very detailed. Oh, interesting. See, I kind of like the detailed ones, but I mean, very detailed. I suppose I have my limits. Like the Nelly Murata ones aren't bad, but there's not a whole lot of variations on the shapes within her animals. I don't know. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit much. Lilac. I've colored like one of her pages, and it just you know it didn't really sing to me. You know what I mean? I don't hear much about Millie Murata these days, though. I don't know if just people aren't coloring her as much or if I'm just not in the right circles to hear about people coloring her pages. I mean, I definitely hear about Clara Markova more than I do Millie Murata. Not that she's not good, but maybe it's just they're not as interested. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. All right, and then we're going to use Flamingo. I want to darken up the edge of this bee a little bit here. So we're going to grab purple iris once more. We're going to press a little bit harder on this outside portion here. There we go. that dark chocolate again because I also want to darken up those edges just a little bit just a tad here there we go all right let's zoom on out take a look at our little bee oh look at those little bees they look so happy and chubby <laughs> okay uh let's go ahead and grab See, let's grab our you know I don't think I want to do that let's do let's grab amethyst 
8 a.m. is too early. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Highs up at 5.30 this morning, Sanka. <laughs> Our reading is Amethyst here. Now the line's a little bit, but that's okay. All right, and then we're gonna use Lavender. And then lastly, Flamingo. And I'm doing these a little bit lighter than the body because the wings are, you know, meant to be kind of light and delicate. All right. Hi, Carol. Welcome. All right. There's our little, our little purple bee. We got red, traditional, purple. And then I think we're going to do kind of a bluish one over here. I think that'll work in focus here. There we go. Has anybody read the book yet? I read it to my uh, to my daughter, but sometimes I read it to see if there's any um, hint as to what color it might be. Taking you to make coffee. Gotta have coffee. Yes, blue one. Yeah, exactly. I think my coffee's turned a little cold. I had a free coffee on my punch card this morning, so I got like a taller one than I usually do, but who am I kidding? I've only drank like half of it, which is good. I mean, I don't drink a ton. All right, in we go. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little blue one. So let's grab Sage, or they're not Sage. Kirby is coming out with a book called Anamorphia Sea and Sky at the end of October. Oh, that'll be fun. All right, so we're gonna grab Jade. Here, we'll zoom out while we grab all the colors. Okay, so Jade. I would love to finish this book for my granddaughter and write a little note in there for her. Aw, that'd be so sweet. All right, so let's grab Jade, and then let's grab uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Jade, and then 106, which is Aegean Blue, or Aegean Blue, Aegean Blue, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Okay, so Aegean Blue, and then we're gonna grab uh, number 17, which is Turquoise. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of like our bluish green stripes. I hear you, Pat. <laughs> and then we're gonna grab number 007, which is indigo. Indigo, and then we're gonna grab, let's see, indigo, and then, I think 008, 008, which is peacock blue. And then number 68, which is periwinkle. Okay. Carol says, I'm just here to say hello because I'm waiting for my grandson to have lunch here in Brazil's lunchtime. Oh, awesome, Carol. Well, hello, hello. I know, right, Pat? It's gonna be so much fun. I have this dream of being able, back but miss too much. I'll, I'll watch it recorded from the beginning later. So just lurking right now. Sounds good, Anne. Um, I have this dream, and I, I mean, I got an email and present to it, but part of me wants to plan it out well so there's, you know, there's a good flow for it and everything. But I would love to be able to do like a joint drawing stream with Johanna. I think that, that would be absolutely amazing. Can you imagine? That'd be so great. I'd have to email it to her, but I want to come up with more specifics before I present the idea to her. But I think that that would be awesome. Okay, so we have number 59, Jade, number 106, Aegean Blue, number 17, Turquoise, number 7, Indigo, number 8, Peacock Blue, and number 68, Periwinkle. 
All right, so let's go over the Prismacolor equivalents real quick in case anybody's using those. All right, so we have Jade. Prismacolor equivalent is number 907. Then we've got the Aegean Blue, which is number 106. Prismacolor equivalent is 1027. Then we've got Turquoise, which is number 17. Prismacolor, Prismacolor equivalent is number 992. Then we've got number 7. Prismacolor equivalent is 1100. Sounds good, Kimmy. Then we've got Peacock Blue, which is number 8. Prismacolor equivalent is 903. And then we've got Periwinkle, which is number 68. Prismacolor equivalent is 1103. Okay? So let's get these sharpened up real quick because with these tiny bees, we need a nice fine point here. Sounds good, Tyler. Thanks for being here. Aw, thanks, Kimmy. anybody coming in I apologize try to say hi to everybody those bees are looking cute I'm still here trying to assist my son in his schoolwork that he's missing since he's home with me ah sounds good Chai I understand kiddos first right okay there we go all right let's zoom on in our little super zoom of our little bee here. Okay, so we are going to start with our kind of greenish one first. So first we're going to use Jade. Oh, that was really bright while I was coloring, wasn't it? Was it? Or is it just when I moved my hand away? We could turn this down just a little bit. Let's go menu, exposure. There we go, bring it down just a little bit. I really want this book too now. So much coloring, not enough time. Oh, I agree. Just got done FaceTime with my parents. They they greeted a happy birthday. Oh, is it happy bir is it your birthday today, Tweetly? Happy birthday! This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Just hands. <laughs> okay, let's see. Aegean Blue. He does look like an Iron Man V, doesn't he? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> He's officially our Tony Stark B. We're gonna use turquoise. I'm gonna kind of go over all that there. That's so funny, I didn't even think about that. Hi, Kenny! Welcome, welcome! We just discovered that our red bee resembles Tony Stark quite a bit, so he's our Tony Stark bee. We're using Jade just to darken up these edges just a little bit. Aging blue, blend that just a tad more. Well, 
welcome, Angela. I am so glad you're here. She says, hi, Emily and everyone. First time at your live stream. Very cool. Well, I'm so glad you're here, Angela. We are working on coloring some bees here from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Oh, thank you, Kimmy. Uh, Kimmy is linking our Facebook and Instagram, so feel free to join uh, both of those if you haven't already on our Facebook. We've got some coloring downloads, some coloring charts, not to mention you can post whatever work in progress you're working on. And then Instagram is also a great way to keep up with what we've got going on the stream. If stream time needs to change at all, um, you can type exclamation point schedule for our regular uh, stream times as well. Okay, and then we're gonna use indigo. There's indigo. Uh, these are our Tisa pencils, Tweetly. Although I am giving the Prismacolor equivalents when I choose the uh, group of colors. Okay, and then this is Peacock Blue. And in fact, if you would like a conversion chart of your own, this is in the files uh, in the Facebook group. I have the Artezas listed and then the Prismacolor that is as close as possible to it. So if you are looking for um, a chart to uh, let you know, we got this one. We also did a comparison between uh, Prismacolors, Artezas, and Ergosofts. So uh, we've got some uh, equivalents also. You can also type also type because I did update it today exclamation point tools and that'll usually tell you what I'm using and the link for the Arteza pencils is exclamation point Arteza pencils and that will bring up the link if you want to check them out as well uh, so yeah peacock blue the nails <laughs> the nails match our little match our little bee here <laughs> or maybe it's just Arteza pencil might be Arteza pencil not pencils Arteza pencil you can also always just type exclamation point commands to check out the commands oh perfect Angela yeah it was Arteza pencil that's what it was Uh, these are going to be a little bit harder than Prismas. I like to say that the Artezas are kind of uh, in between um, the Prismacolors and the Polychromos. I have a lot less breakage with these to be sure. And then we're going to use Periwinkle. I think I can feel a little bit of pencil dust under here. Ah. Where'd we go? There we are. Did you ever get time to do that 48? Oh, no, I haven't, Kathy. Honestly, I forgot. Let me um, grab my sticky note here so I won't forget. If I write it down during stream, then I put it by my computer and I don't forget it that way. Okay, so blank 48 count chart. Okay, now I'll have it up. If I don't write it down, I tend to forget. So gonna set up and find this page. Oh, awesome, Pat. All right, so I've got this up on my computer now, uh, Kathy, so I will work on that today. I'm sorry, I totally spaced that. But I've got another sticky note now, so I'll be able to see it and I can work on that today. Okay, so let's see. We need to color his little eyes here. So let's grab Jade. I mean, I could say, oh, not yet, but I, I like to be honest with you guys. I, I legitimately forgot. <laughs> I'd 
like to think that if if I'm honest, it makes, you know, makes it, you know, every, everybody's, everybody's human, everyone forgets, and I'd like to think that our group is pretty understanding, and I'd rather be honest with you guys than not. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, I've had to. I actually got myself a weekly calendar that's got a little cork board underneath. So, like, that sticky note, I put it, like, all the sticky notes from one particular stream because I have marked on the calendar when the stream days are. So, I'll organize the sticky notes so that they're on the cork board and I mark the, and I, I tack them up under that specific stream so I know, like, when I wrote it down kind of thing. Like, I can date the sticky notes, of course, but it's got the little cork board underneath, so I just tack them up where I need to. Like, I think I've got one up right there. Uh, somebody gave me the idea because I want to start selling um, coloring pages on Etsy, but then somebody else uh, recommended, why don't you put a color palette with the page? And I'm like, oh, that's great. And then uh, what do I have? Oh, I want to make an album in the Facebook group about DIY storage, about how people do their storage stuff. Again, all things I haven't done yet, but the sticky note doesn't go away until I've accomplished the thing. So uh, the same thing like uh, with the pencils. If I can't get them on the YouTube right away, I write down all the pencil numbers on the sticky notes and then put it underneath the stream day. Okay, uh, so let's grab Jade now. The biggest set for those pencils are 72. Uh, yes. Yeah, let me double check on the box. Yeah, 72 is the biggest set for them. And unfortunately, they don't sell singles. I think they're talking about potentially doing singles, um, but they don't yet. All right, so we're using Jade. Aegean blue. My cat is snoring right now. <laughs> right? That's the other great thing, too. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And uh, Tweetly, if you need to, I don't know if I if you followed it already. But this is the Arteza website, Arteza Pencil. There you go, and that'll bring them up too. They have watercolor pencils also. Although from what I hear, uh, these pencils are also water soluble. It was, I think, an unintended thing, but apparently if you add water to these, these are also water soluble. I haven't tried it yet, but that is what I hear on the coloring grapevine. Hi, Michelle, welcome. We're just working on our a little bees here. All right, uh, then let's grab indigo. I'm not pressing real hard. I kind of want to get a light color out of these. Then peacock blue. Aw, thanks, Tweely. Hi, Pat, never been at the gym, watching as I'm on the bike. Ooh, nice, Michelle. You have so much more discipline than I do. I feel like I should have more upbeat music then for you to work out to. Or, like, start cheering you on, like, come on, Michelle, just one more mile. <laughs> now it's time to go uphill. Let's go, move those legs, drink some water, breathe regularly. You could do it, Michelle. <laughs> now, periwinkle. There we go. No, not a pill. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's grab. Let's grab our blood orange here. Let's see, do I want to do blood orange? No, let's do garnet. Let's do garnet. We're gonna use a little bit of garnet just in the corners here, okay. Just a little bit there. 
There we go. Let's zoom on out. You can kind of see how that red's looking a little bit. Giving it a little bit of little bit of depth there. Maybe we can add a little bit of garnet here too. Kind of underneath those wings. A little bit of garnet there. Which then tells me I want to take jade. Get those in focus there. Killer bees! I know, right? I have a beginner question. Do you blend your coloring always or it depends on the paper and the color pencils? Um both i suppose so it kind of depends on what effect you're going for and also the type of pencil you're using sometimes um like if you're talking blend like kind of mushing the colors together or just coloring lightly to where they blend together i always feel like it definitely looks nice to blend your pencils but some pencils are so hard you can't exactly press hard to move the pigment around um the best pencil for moving pigment around and blending is prismacolor by far but with pencils like Ergosofts and Polycolors, you need to kind of build up the layers. And that is the case a little bit with the Artezas, but the Artezas do blend well with each other. So you're going to get a much smoother look if you do some sort of blend. If you do a lot of harsh lines next to each other, the flow is not going to be, able to be well with it. And um, you're going to get, it's uh, I guess little, because I don't really go for realistic coloring, but it'll be a little less realistic um, if you don't blend. I'm gonna zoom in just a tad. We're gonna use jade a little bit underneath these wings. For those of you that are new to the stream, um, I like to use complementary colors for shading because it helps give it a bit of a contrasting pop. And so you don't always necessarily need to use black to shade. All right, and then for the yellow bee, let's grab a nice dark purple color like amethyst. Okay. And if you're unfamiliar with complementary colors, when you're coloring, that is a great place to start. And I have a little something here that is handy to use. So if you are just starting out and you're not quite sure about what colors to choose or how to use them, get yourself one of these. This is a pocket color wheel. And if you know anything about colors, or if you learn, you know, you remember back to like high school, if you took an art class, there are what's called um, complementary colors. And what that generally means is on a color wheel, they're gonna be the color that's opposite of one another. So first you have your primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. Now they're called primary colors because there is no color on the color wheel that you can mix to get these colors. These, I've been trying some dramatic lighting, but I think I may be over my head. I would say start light Senka and then slowly build up more of the dramatic lighting. I wouldn't go straight from a light to a super dark. I would go, you know, make sure you have some mid colors in there to build it up. Um, so red, blue, and yellow are essentially the starting color of any color. Any color that you have is going to have one of these colors in it, which is why, you know, they'll have warm grays or cool grays. So anything in the red and yellow range are going to be kind of more of a warm color. When you start getting into the violets and the blues and the greens, you're going to be more into cool colors. So reds, oranges, yellows are all going to be warm. Uh, blues, greens, and purples are all going to be cool colors. So blue, red, and yellow are your primary colors. Then you have your secondary colors, which are violet, orange, and green. And so you take blue and yellow together, you get green. You take blue and red together, you get violet. And red and yellow together, and you get orange. Then you have your tertiary colors, which are red, violet, red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, and blue violet. These are all your basic colors. Obviously, there are multiple uh, variations in color. Uh, you know, as you mix, you know, they've got a gajillion names for all of the colors. One of the handy things about the pocket color wheel tell you is it'll tell you what color is it going to make when you add to it. So, for instance, let's say we're adding yellow to red. So, red, yellow, you're going to get orange. If you add yellow to purple, you're going to get a nice kind of brownish color. You add yellow to blue you're gonna get green and it's the same thing here so you've got adding red adding yellow adding blue okay then you have your tints and your shades which are your whites and your blacks okay so everybody knows you add white to red you're gonna get what you're gonna get pink if you add black to red you're gonna get this kind of almost burgundy color and if you look closely on this color wheel let's zoom in here a little bit 
okay? It's also got your values here, which are your different shades of black also, and different there. So that's your that's what's called grayscale. Anywhere from black to the range, if you're just doing black and white, the range from black all the way to white, everything in between is gonna be called grayscale. Hi, Bo, welcome. We're just going over a little bit of color theory as we're, as we're coloring. Oh, awesome, Charlotte. You can find this one on Amazon, Michelle. They're real cheap, like five bucks or less, depending on who you order it from. So here's where it says here what I was talking about. So you have primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue are the basic colors and cannot be made from mixing other colors. So those are your starter colors. Secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. Each made mixing two primary colors. Uh, I will have to look that up in a little bit, Kelly. Um, I will post the link after stream and put it in the description because I wasn't planning on doing the color wheel, but um, I'll post the link for it uh, in the description. So uh, yeah, so secondary colors, like I said, orange, green, and violet, each made by mixing two primary colors. Oh, uh, uh, Kelly, I don't know that you can because you're not a mod. Hey, Kimmy. Well, maybe. Yeah, I'll just, I'll put it in the description, Kelly. Because I don't want Kimmy to have to go search for it either. Because um, I think only mods can post links. Uh, and then we have tertiary colors. It says there are six tertiary colors, each made by mixing one primary color with an adjacent secondary color. So, for instance, red, primary, violet, secondary. Red, violet is your tertiary. And look, it even says here, all your cool colors are this way, warm colors are this way. Then it says warm, which are advancing colors, reds, oranges, and yellows, cools, greens, blues, and violets. So literally this little pocket thing is going to tell you all you need to know about color. So, you know, it tells you how to use it, a guide to mixing colors. It says color. You've got some de definitions here for you. So color described by three characteristics, hue, value, and intensity. What that means, hue is the color. Okay. Value See how it has grade scale? Basically value is the color it is from light to dark. And then uh, intensity is kind of just how, how bright the color is. So here we go. Hue is the name of a particular color. Example, blue, orange, green, and yellow. Value, the relative lightness or darkness of a color, refer to grayscale, which is what they have here. The pure intensity is the purity of a color which determines its relative brightness or dullness. So like I said, intensity is going to be super, super bright. And then, you know, you desaturate it. That's going to be, you know, how dull it is. A tint is anytime you add white to something. A tone is color plus gray. So that's, you know, kind of your in between. Your shade is color plus black. And the neutral gray is a balanced combination of black and white. And that's what all of these tones out here are. So if you are new to color and you're struggling with choosing your colors, always know that complementary colors will always go well together. So yellow and purple are going to look great together. Blue and orange right there are going to look great also, as well as red and green. I mean, think about Christmas, you know, they always go well together. So that's a little small color theory for you. I will link the description. Uh, I, I will link, put the link in the description below after stream today. But if you are struggling with choosing your colors or color theory in general, or what goes well together, get yourself a color wheel. This will be super, super handy. So, um, look for it this afternoon. I'm going to post that in the description below a little bit later, but anyway, super handy, small little color theory lesson for you there. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna grab amethyst again. Finish that shading. So that's why I'm using purple to shade this little yellow bee because it's a complementary color. Now I'm gonna grab jade again to add a little bit contrasting shadow to our little purple bee, okay? Because jade's kind of a, a dark green. All right, hope that was helpful. I love my pocket color wheel. I found it at Hobby Lobby and used my 40% coupon. Oh, awesome. That's perfect. Now I know there's little dots up here, but I'm probably going to go back over these and use some uh, gel pen with those. Okay. So there is all four of our bees colored. Now we need to do like a little bit of a background color. And I am thinking, well, maybe we should color these leaves first and then we can choose our background color. So let's, sounds good, Kimberly. So let's zoom on in just a bit here. 
Emily, I've been struggling so bad with color. Watch so many on color and just don't get it. You just explained it in a way I finally get it. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad, Rita. I'm so glad. Well, you know, somebody was asking, I think that we should do a color theory stream sometime. Because, I mean, I kind of went over kind of quickly how it goes, but we could do a whole thing with using uh, shading and tints and that kind of thing. Would everybody enjoy that if we did a color theory stream where we weren't necessarily coloring a page, but we just spent a stream discussing color. Everybody could ask their questions and, and we could go over it that way. Is that something everyone would enjoy? Or do you think that that would be a little tedious? Yes. Okay. I have two very, yeah, two very strong yeses. And yes, definitely. Okay. Maybe we'll do that for one of these then. I think that'd be good. All right. Let's grab some greens and color these leaves. Hi, Marsha. Welcome. And Marsha says yes. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, cool. Well, then I'll definitely, I'm going to add that to the sticky note here where I've got my little note. Okay. So we're going to do color All right, we're gonna put that on the list here. Cause I know we had sort of talked about it before, but we hadn't really, you know, it wasn't anything that was too confirmed. Maybe we could do a special, um... get it girl, good job. Treadmill next, you're doing so much better than me. Oh, my two and a half year old baby's next to me. And he said, mommy, it's so beautiful looking at the bees. Oh, that's so sweet. Maybe we could do that on like a weekend stream so that everybody would have a chance to be here. You know, do it at like 10 o'clock or something. So it's not super early, but we could do that like on a weekend so that everybody, because I know a lot of people work so that everybody could have a chance to be here. All right, so let's grab number, What? how much time do I have? I have got 30 minutes. I'd love that help me. Yes, yes, okay, awesome. Yeah, we could plan that for a weekend stream. All right, so let's do number 41, number 93, and let's do number 42, okay. We're gonna use these for our little leaves down here, okay? So we've got number 41, number 93, and number 42. Okay, so Prismacolor equivalents are, let's zoom out just a tad here. All right, so we have 41, Prismacolor equivalent is 908. Then we've got 93, Prismacolor equivalent is 909. And then we've got number 42, Prismacolor Equivalent is 913. Also, does everyone blend with a blending solution or a pen at the end? Uh, I do not, Angela. When it comes to my blending, um, occasionally I will use something like, let's see, do I have it out right now? Um, so I really like the Caranda Osh blender pencil. And I know I have one here. Didn't think I put it away. There we go. Okay, so I really like this. This is the uh, Caranda Osh blender pencil. If I use one, if I use one, which I rarely do, um, this is the colorless Caranda Osh blender pencil. Um, the only risk with this is that because there's no wood around it, it's just strictly the blender. They are easily breakable if you put too much pressure. The other thing I use frequently to blend over the top if I need to is just a white Prismacolor. I do not use um, the Prismacolor blender pencil because it's so scratchy. It just kind of removes pigment and just kind of thins it out. So I don't like to use that one. There's really no other blender pencils I like to use. Now, I've heard of people using um, different various liquids to blend, which you can. I just find that it's not entirely necessary, at least not for me. So if I use anything to blend, like this is the extent of this. I'm not doing any other blending with this. I tend to just use my lightest color because I have kind of a rule of three. I use a dark, a mid, and a light. And if I need to do any blending, I'll either A, use the light color to blend, or B, 
like these ones, I'll go over with a second layer. So, you know, I lay down my dark, and a lot of people say color light to dark, and that does work in some situations. For these bees, however, I color dark to light. So I laid down my dark color, then I blended in the dark color with the mid color. And by blending, I just mean that like, maybe I started out heavier, and then as I went in, I colored a little, a little lightly. So you don't have those harsh lines between colors. So I did my dark, then I added my light, or my mid, and then lastly I went over my light, and then you can choose to go over the entire thing, and then do a second layer of your dark, your mid, and your light again, and that will blend it well enough for you. Yes, perfect, yeah, Kimmy said she uses the, the rule of three, yes, so, yeah, I use the rule of three, a dark, a mid, and a light, and that generally gives you enough range, as long as you're creating no harsh lines to get a, a decent blend on it. So, but if I do use something else, these are the only two things that I use which will be the, like I said, Karanda Osh blender pencil and just a white Prismacolor. I like to use the white Prismacolor more often just because the Karanda Osh ones tend to be a little bit more expensive and uh, the white is a lot easier. The thing with the white though is it will lighten your color a little bit. Okay. All right, let's get these leaves done. If we can get this box finished before we have to leave, although I feel like it's silly that it took me two hours to do this, but you know, I stopped to chat and everything like that. So it's all good. Next time we could work on the door. All right, so we're gonna use forest green. You never know when there's teachable moments. <laughs> I can zoom in just a bit more here those leaves in here there we go. which is why most of the time ah thanks Kimmy most of the time when you see me choosing colors um, like a couple of these things, if it's too small, I'll just choose two colors. But my general go-to is I will choose three colors. All right, then basil. So I'm not pressing real hard. I'm going pretty lightly because I'm going to be adding that lighter color up on top. Use all the rulers and the plunders. There you go. Okay, and then spring green. The top color. And I'm going to grab forest green again. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. And then basil. No worries, Pat, you're good. Welcome back. And then spring green. Am I a teacher? I am not a teacher. Well, I, I like to think I help teach you. Um, but I, I my, my day job is parenting, so I suppose I, I, I teach my kiddos. Um, but, I don't know, color is just something that I love, so it kind of just, I don't know, it comes easily to me. <laughs> and I love to pass on what knowledge that I have to help everybody else, you know, enjoy their coloring a little bit more, because I figure the, the more you know, the easier it is. Oh, no problem, Pat. We stopped for a moment, we went over a little color theory. I mean, okay, wait, I do teach a painting class about four times a year. Aw, I'm so glad, Kimmy. All right, now we're going to use Garnet. I thought for a while that I wanted to be like a high school or, or grade school teacher, but I don't know. High school kids are mean. <laughs> I mean, I like my kids. I like my friends' kids but I think I enjoy this quite a bit more. Plus in this way, I kind of get to be my own boss, you know? 
All right, we're gonna use, we're, just, we're gonna blend that red just a tad more. So I'm not pressing too hard, but you can see it's really just kind of softening the harshness of that red line there. Oh, I'm so glad, Bo. I actually thought about, um, well, I thought about it. I like, I had some Michael's classes. I was going to teach some coloring in, but you know, as big as the coloring community is online, trying to find a solid coloring community where you actually live, it's tough. And so there wasn't a whole lot of interest in the classes. Aw, thanks, Abby. <laughs> Oh, thank Kimmy. Oh, you guys are so nice. You'll be great at it. But high school, huh? Yes, they are great. I know, right? Let's see. Agreed, Charlotte. That's something I need to work on. It's so hard, though, putting words into teaching. Yeah, it can be. Like I said, color is something I feel pretty passionate about. Just like coloring and art and, you know, if I had to teach you how to change a tire, I can change a tire myself, but I think I'd have a hard time teaching how to change a tire. Cooking, though. I feel like I could teach cooking as well, though. Co uh, let me Let me clarify. Teaching how to cook something I know how to cook. <laughs> uh, let's do some, let's see. Let's do some, uh, let's do a pink flower over here. Oh, thanks, Kimmy. Yeah, those are for my, uh, for my painting classes. I have uh, an idea that I need to attempt. I just haven't gotten around to do it. There's this girl that I follow on Instagram that, that makes um, really cool port paintings. I want to try and do what she's doing. Aw, thanks, Annette. Right, Tweedly? I always said if I had a bigger kitchen, I would totally do some cooking streams. Totally do cooking streams. Uh, let's see. Let's grab number 81. Do I already have 81 out? I think I might already have 81 out. Let's see. That's 82. Where's 81? 80. Oh, there we go. Plum. Let's get plum and 83, which is pink macaroon. All right, let's sharpen these real quick. And we're actually only going to do two colors with these because the petals are so small. Cooking is a bad word in my house. <laughs> See, let me clarify. Okay, uh, probably baking over cooking. I made some bread yesterday. I'm so thankful my hubby likes to cook me, not so much. Yeah, I'm lucky. My husband doesn't mind picking up the slack cooking because it's also, we're at this stage where it's with my son and he's super picky and sometimes it's just exhausting trying to find foods he will actually eat. It kind of takes the fun out of cooking. But I was feeling adventurous yesterday and I kind of uh, Frankensteined a recipe, so to speak, and I came up with a recipe to make um, pesto bread in my bread maker made fresh pesto and everything. Ooh, it turned out really good. Although my oldest was like, mommy, it's kind of green. It's like, yeah, honey, it's pesto. Uh, so we're using plum number 81 whoop, and uh, pink macaroon number 83. So I made the pesto bread and then cooked up some potatoes and then made some chicken breast to go with that. So that's pretty tasty. The bread was definitely the highlight though. Lots of garlic, so, you know, super tasty. My color seems, or my brightness seems a little off. I'm gonna turn it down just a tad here. There we go, that's a bit. Sometimes those are the best, right? I know I should do a mini cooking class, Kimmy, but my kitchen is so small. <laughs> I love to bake, but it's just the two of us and we don't need the sweets. Or do you? Are you sure? I vote you need the sweet Charlotte. <laughs> My husband usually cooks. That's awesome. Mine too, Bill. You wouldn't even let me in the kitchen. He says, I just get in the way. That's hilarious. All right. And then pink macaroon. Then we're gonna slide it on over. Hello, Joe Beth, welcome. All right, so we're gonna grab our plum once again and we're gonna do the outside here. There we go, then with the pink macaron here. Okay, 
Then we're gonna do blue. Our right bow, exactly. I watch a lot of crock pot recipes on YouTube. I love, oh, I know, I use my crock pot all the time, Tamara, all the time. All right, uh, then let's grab indigo, which is number seven. Indigo, and then we're gonna grab peacock blue here. There we go. And we're gonna slide on over. Hi, Kim. Do you put pressure as you color, Emily? It depends, Tweetly. So, like, here, we're gonna grab indigo again. When I am starting out before I get to the blend, I put a pot roast in the crock pot this morning. Oh, awesome, Kimmy. I will press a little bit harder at the base, but then I go lighter as I go out so that I can blend in the next color. Now, if I'm like onto my second or even third layer, I will tend to press uh, harder, but I vary anywhere from super light to super hard at any different uh, stage. So I don't always just color with one certain uh, pressure during the whole thing. Hello, Leslie, welcome, exactly. You're never late, you arrive precisely when you mean to. <laughs> All right, then the peacock blue here. So that we've got, look at that, we got pink and blue flower. All right, let's lighten this back up again. There we go, it's a little bit better. And then we're gonna add a little bit of yellow in the middle here. So let's grab our cinnamon here. Okay. Cinnamon, and then we're gonna grab our yellow ochre. Okay, just a little bit there, and then we're gonna slide on over. Got about 15 minutes. Great color theory and blending lesson, Emily. I have to go, but I'll be back on your streams and channel. Well, thanks for being here, Angela. I'm so glad you were here. We'll be live again Friday night at 8.30. Hey there, looks like I've got some catching up to do. Hi, Leslie. Yeah, just a bit. We haven't made it too far. We're just coloring some bees here. So just the first, just the first panel down at the bottom. Thanks for linking those, Kimmy. All right, so we've got about 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of the background. Let's see, what do we wanna do for that? We've got a full range of colors here so far. Let's do, we could go with like kind of a parchment thing. No, you know, I kind of wanna do, let's do blue and yellow, okay? Thanks for that, Kimmy. Kimmy just uh, linked the schedule there too for those that are new. Okay, so let's grab number 104, which is Mykonos Blue here. Okay, and then we're gonna grab uh, number 17. I think we have that out already. Turquoise, yep, number 17. Okay. And then from 17, we'll go to We'll go to from 17. We're gonna go to number 99. 99. See if we can find our color. There we go. That'll be absinthe green. Okay. Then we're gonna grab number 101. Lime. And then we're gonna grab number 28. Yellow sapphire. Okay, so those are gonna be our colors. I'm gonna sharpen these two real quick. Well, I'm gonna go now for work. Uh, more on my Cozy Octopus, gonna watch part three. We'll start this tonight. Oh, awesome, Tamara, sounds good. Okay, I wanna get this background done before we go here. Okay, all right. So we've got five colors here. And just because we're in a hurry, I'm not gonna list the Prismacolor ones. Um, you can always download the chart on Facebook if you need them. Okay, so number 104, Mykonos Blue. Number 17, Turquoise. Number Absinthe Green, 99. And number 101, Lime. And number 28, Sapphire, okay? Oop, look at me, I'm making a mark, but Sounds good, Tamara. Erase that little mark I made. 
There we go. All right, let's zoom on in. All right. So we're going to start with, oh, look at that, I dinged to the top of that pencil. Just a second. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with Mykonos Blue here. Okay, and we're going to color really lightly. So I'm using a very light hand on this. Now you can almost barely see it. What if I darken this just a tad? There you go, you can see it a little bit better now. Okay. And it's okay if you go over the antenna because we're gonna use gel pen to fill in those little, those little circles. Okay, so we're coloring very lightly. Using kind of the sides so we don't get, you know, any harsh lines. Okay. Now we're going to use turquoise. Kind of blending that up in there in the blue. Like I said, we're going real lightly here. And we're going to grab absinthe green, going on up into those colors. I'm just coloring real lightly here. Okay. And we're going to use lime. bottom we're going to use yellow sapphire okay now we're gonna grab that same order again we're gonna use Mykonos blue I'm gonna go just a little bit darker this time still pressing kind of lightly because you don't want to get ahead of yourself it's okay if you go out of the line a little bit you're gonna be coloring the border later anyway or you can, you know, use a little eraser and, and erase just a little bit of it, okay? All right, so we're using that Mykonos Blue again. Might be bringing it down just a little bit further. Evidently, Ozzy loves your voice. He's trying to get in my lap. A 90-pound Ozzy, oh, goodness. <laughs> Can't wait to start my page as soon as Logan takes his nap. Oh, there you go. All right, then turquoise again. Well, hi, Ozzy! Ozzy! Who's a cute little 90 pound Ozzy? <laughs> Alright, there's the turquoise. Okay. My cat's waking up. I think she thought I was calling her. I did my, did my pet voice. Well, perfect, Pat. I can't wait to see it. All right, then. Oh, he's beating you up. Come on, Ozzy. Come on, Ozzy. <laughs> Jump up, Ozzy. Jump up, Ozzy. <laughs> I'm probably not helping, Pat. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, absinthe green again.
I was watching a stream one time where there was this guy and everybody kept, uh, they, they, they were on voice. And so in their house, they had an Alexa machine. And so they kept saying, hey, Alexa, play Baby Shark. And because it was, he's looking all in my face. <laughs> because uh, his, his sound was outward, uh, Alexa kept coming on and playing Baby Shark. It was hilarious. So if anybody is watching and has an Alexa, I'm going to say it really loud. Alexa, play Baby Shark. Okay, now everybody has to know if Alexa goes off and plays Baby Shark. <laughs> Okay, then yellow. Okay, so that was our second layer of color there. What time is it? 54, we're still doing okay. All right, now what we're gonna do, no, Emily! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're outside. There you go, Kimmy, do you have an Alexa? <laughs> oh, that's right, Logan's napping. Oh no, I'm <laughs> sorry, Kimmy. <laughs> Okay, alright, so we're gonna use Mykonos Blue one more time. Oh my god, Alexis playing a shark! <laughs> that's awesome, Abby! <laughs> oh, that's amazing! That is amazing! I love it! I love it! <laughs> alright, so we're gonna grab Mykonos Blue one more time for a third layer. And we're gonna add a little bit of darkness around the edge. That's hilarious. Alexa, Alexa must be sleeping. She didn't hear you. There you go. Oh, goodness. All right, you got lucky this time. You got lucky this time, Shaleen. There you go. For those that are watching now, I'm just going to randomly shout commands to Alexa to play different songs. <laughs> That's amazing. Or Siri. We could do Siri. I think I have, like, things beyond my phone, but I have all those features turned off. All right, so there's a little bit of the darker blue. And then we're gonna use a little bit of the turquoise. Just up around the edges a little bit. Go. All right, then absent green. And lie. Up along the sides here. Edge. And then yellow down here on the bottom. I am pressing a little bit harder for yellow because it's kind of hard to see yellow sometimes. There we go. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could use white to kind of blend that through a little bit. Okay, uh, ch -ch -ch. now we're gonna quickly grab um, our Pentel Sleechy Metallic Gel Pens. Okay, so I have a blue one here. Okay, and I'm going to add the blue to the antennas there. Okay, and I'm gonna grab a red one. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, I like these little little sections, you know? All right, there's the red one. Okay, then I'm gonna grab the yellow one. Where are you at, yellow? Ah, where's my yellow? Ah, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna grab a yellow one. And actually, we can turn this up just a tad now. Get a tad brighter. Okay, yellow. Time is it? 10.57, okay, we're doing good. And then we're gonna grab purple. Hi, Brittany, welcome, welcome, and Rochelle. Hi, Rochelle. Oh, you said hi up there, I missed it. Well, hello, Rochelle. <laughs> they look like they're at the beach. Yeah, a little bit, don't they, Leslie? There we go. All right, and then lastly, one last little embellishment, make sure we have the clear one. Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, got the clear one. We're gonna add a little bit of Wink Estella to their wings here. Wink Estella is just like clear 
glitter ink. We'll, I'll turn the page here so you can kind of see where it is on their wings. It was kind of fun because for Johanna's um, I, uh, Ivy and the Inky Butterfly that she sent pages out for people to color, uh, I got a page with one of the Solo B on it. And normally you can't really see this, but I obviously used plenty of Winka Stell on the wings. So because the page was sent to her, she was able to actually see all the glitter. So it was great. Yes, love Winka Stell, all right? Exactly. Okay, so now you can see I'm going to pick this up here. If you can see a little bit on the light, let's see if I can get a little bit of a... There, there, you can see it's kind of wet, but there's it makes it kind of glittery. So, all right, let's zoom out here. And by zoom out, I mean I'm gonna raise this even more here so that we can see what we've created here. There we go. So, I know it's small, but I think that turned out pretty nice with our little single little section here. So yeah, I think it, I think it came out pretty nice. I mean, I know I only got one section done, but you know, we stopped to chat and had a little color theory lesson and everything, but it's great. I like it because it's just these small little individual sections we can work on, you know? So I think, I think it'll be good. I think this will be, I think this will turn out real well. And then next time we will probably start to work on the door here or maybe these small ones like the butterfly and the leaf and stuff. So yeah, and it's 11 o'clock. Hey, that's perfect. I wonder, has anyone taken this book apart to have it spiral around? I'm sure they have. I've taken apart other books. So there's definite risks to it because um, they have to cut off a bit of the spine. So I'll show you real quick on mine. I can go for just another minute or so here longer to show you. So these are two that I've had spiral around. This was a lost ocean one. So they cut off the spine and then they'll spiral bound it, which is great. On my um, Enchanted Forest, what I did is I actually got a plastic cover for the front of mine. And then in between each pages, I cut tracing paper to fit it. Now the only risk is, is that when you're coloring and you turn it right side out, let me see, there was... Wait. Okay, yeah, here. So I tend to turn it like this and color it like so. So obviously this piece of tracing paper is back, but because the tracing paper is so fine, it ripped here. So some of the risks you have to keep in mind when you get it spiral bound is A, you are going to lose some of your, your pages. So you can see here. Um, it could be Pat. So they're going to use a machine that's going to get a nice thin cut all the way along the side. So when I took mine in, cause I did do a local print shop. I didn't do like a big box shop, like office, uh, like office depot or whatever, whatever does it. Um, so I expressed to them, I wanted it as thinly cut as possible. So they were able to do that for me. So I guess it kind of just depends on where you go, but just know you are going to lose some of your page. And also there's the risk, you know, depending on how competent the people are, where you go to that they could get some pages out of order. Um, but like I even had them add the dragon pages in here. And I explained to them that I wanted to make sure that this edge didn't get caught so I can still, you know, unfold it and everything. So just something to, something to keep in mind. How much does it cost to do? I don't remember, honestly. I mean, I got all the extras, like the bigger spiral and the plastic covering and stuff. And then I bought the tracing paper and cut it myself, but I wouldn't think any more than, I would think less than 10. Anyway, okay, well, it's 11.02. I got to head out because I got to go get my kiddo from school. Um, but there are happy little bees. Here we go. Let's, let's focus it here. Um, this afternoon, I will get a picture of these taken. Oh, come on. Focus, you. There we go. I'll get a picture of these taken, and I'll post uh, color pencils, things, and I'll add a couple more links, all right? So I'm going to head out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone, for being here. Wonderful, wonderful group. And I will see you all Friday night. Friday night, 8.30, okay? Um, I am not sure yet what we're going to be doing. I don't know. We have a couple work in progresses, but we might... We might move, we might move on from those. Yeah, maybe Brittany. I think it just depends on where you go. I would call ahead of time and find out. I honestly don't remember. I got those spiral bound a couple years ago, so it's it's been a while. Anyway, okay. 
I will see everyone around and uh, yeah, I'll see you Friday. Everyone have a great rest of your day and see you then. Bye.